Hello my soccer universe. It's kind of late. Uh, Milan Kievo game. Kievo Milan ended an hour ago and meanwhile I watched quite some highlights. Uh, although not all the highlights that I wanted to see but you know gotta stop somewhere. Uh, most of the action I think was in Germany uh, where we can talk a lot about. I uh, also want to talk about the uh, Friday games yesterday a little bit because I saw most of the highlights there but we'll do this in the roundup. Uh, but while most of the action was in Germany I want to start in England and yes you can tell I'm wearing a Newcastle shirt which say, which tells you that Newcastle has won 3-2 uh, at home to Everton after being 2-0 down at half time. That's a, uh, a big result and I would have liked to see the highlights but the zone is now showing the game delayed and then uh, get the highlights tomorrow. Uh, Calvert Levin made it 1-0 for uh, Everton, Richard Linson 32nd 2-0 and then Rondon in the 65th 1-2 and uh, Ayuso Perez in the 81st and the 84th gives Newcastle the win which makes me personally quite happy as you know I'm uh, in the Newcastle camp. I think they are if not my favorite team they are in my top three in England quite easily so uh, always makes happy black and white brothers. Crystal Palace against Brighton was the first game actually and um, there I saw the highlights. Uh, Crystal Palace dominated the game but Brighton made the goals. Three shots and goal, two goals, win 2-1 and for some reason this is a derby. Yes I mean there's some proximity geographically but um, I wonder the backstory. Cardiff West Ham 2-0 Cardiff getting the win. Haha. <laughs> Huddersfield Bournemouth 0 2. Um, well, that was expected. Leicester Fulham 3 1. And yeah, from what, when I read the results, Cardiff might have a little lifeline. Fulham uh, is down. Uh, Southampton Tottenham actually saw the last few minutes of that game when I saw the highlights now. Um, Tottenham really dominated the first half and got the goal by Kane. And early in the second half, they should have wrapped this one up, but no. Southampton comes back, uh, gets an e uh, equalizer through uh, Valeri. Valeri. That's how do you pronounce this guy? In the uh, 15 minutes before, for the end, uh, it was a weird goal because he didn't. Uh, either he didn't hit it fully, or he totally intended it that when he touches it, it drops and then goes in. Anyway, one-one, and then just a few minutes later, free kick and. Ward Prowse, absolutely beautiful free kick. I mean, there was no chance for Yoris to get there, and that was the game for uh, Southampton. Probably a little bit of a lucky win, but a win nonetheless. So, yeah, Southampton beats Spurs, and Spurs gets in trouble. And then uh, I wanted to see highlights, but didn't see uh, Manchester City against Watford. I saw it that halftime was 0 0, and I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe, nope. 3-1 and it was, uh, they were 3-0 up within uh, yeah, 15 minutes. Ster Raheem Sterling with a hat-trick, 46th, 50th and 59th. De Olofeo, yeah, who I know from Milan, pulls one back in the 66th and then that's how the game ends. So Manchester City extending the lead for now and Liverpool needs to catch up uh, playing tomorrow uh, at home to Burnley where I think you better get a lot of goals. Uh, we have, of course, Arsenal United and Chelsea Wolves. Arsenal United, I think, is the big game that I may end up watching. Why not? I think there's nothing else. Spain. Uh, we had yesterday in the evening uh, Athletic Bilbao against Espanyol. The Espanyol took a very early lead. Uh, I think, yeah, the ninth minute Ferreira. After an assist by Wu Lei, who is the first Chinese in uh, the Primera Div Division, and actually it looks like uh, Espanyol can hang on to it, uh, but Bilbao got a late equalizer. Um, the teams were level on points before going into this game, they remain level on points, and I probably justified results overall. Other than that, Alaves, Eibar 1 1. I saw a little bit of Atletico Madrid against Leganes. Um, there was not much coming from Leganes, honestly. Atletico Madrid gets the goal by Sal Nuguez uh, from a penalty that was saved and then on the rebound Nuguez makes it 1-0. Uh, 
Well, you know, there were players not being put into the game because every, everyone is pointing to the Tuesday Champions League against Juventus, where Atletico holds a 2 0 lead. Um, more Juventus in a little bit. Barcelona against Rayo, uh, was, that is a game that I watched uh, almost all of it, you know, with distractions from my daughter's end and, and so on. But I had the chance between the City and the Barcelona game, and I know the Barcelona game doesn't mean much uh, in a way, but. Hey, it's Barcelona. I actually expected that to be a more competitive game than the City game <laughs> for some weird reason. Yes, and it was competitive. When you thought the Barcelona has has all the, everything in control, Raul de Tomas makes it 1-0 for uh, Rayo. It was actually a really, really nice shot where Atesti had no chance to get to. However, you know, then Barcelona took it seriously. There was a really nice move that, for some reason, Coutinho couldn't get weight behind the ball because that actually he should have uh, uh, put on goal and maybe made a goal. But then Messi free kick, Piquet heads it home and yeah, almost knocks out the goalkeeper in the process. But it was um, all fair game. Uh, so one one at halftime, you. Uh, might be thinking, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe could be more. Um, Barcelona gets a penalty, probably pretty much justified. Uh, Messi slots it home 51st, and then it's more or less. Uh, Rayo, I think, had only half chances from that moment on. It was just a question of time if Barcelona was making more in the uh, Suarez got the uh, third goal. In the 82nd minute, after Rakitic came on, who actually has played a lot of games this season, and now he was on the, on the bench. Again, Barcelona, Champions League, Lyon, that's where it's at, and that's why Barcelona maybe didn't play all full out and even uh, took off a few players, but Messi is playing, of course. Uh, and Getafe, 2-1 uh, against Uesca, but Uesca had a 1-0 lead at halftime. That was the evening game. Um, yeah, Mata scoring both goals um, in the 50th and 77th, a penalty. I haven't seen anything, so I cannot tell you much. But as it stands now, um, both top two teams win. Uh, Barcelona 63, Atleti 56. So this is seven points. The game is coming soon uh, in Camp Now. I just don't see it. I mean, even on a day where both teams play more or less reserve squads, Barcelona is pulling away with one more goal. Uh, Getafe secures their fourth spot. It is unbelievable. Getafe might play Champions League. Um, yeah, we have to see how the rest is going. Alaves, uh, 41 points, um, is also in the mix, but you know, dropping points against Eibar surely didn't help. Uh, they are cut, they are cause, which makes Getafe look even a bit more more basically. Sevilla will play tomorrow, can close the gap on Alaves. Uh, same goes for Valencia, Betis, Real Sociedad, and so on. Uh, as I said, Espanyol and uh, moves now up ahead of um, Leganes. Uh, Bilbao is down. Uh, Bo 34 34, Leganes have 33 points. Um, in the relegation zone, still Rayo doesn't get much. Oh, 23 points, two points behind Celta, who played tomorrow. Villarreal is playing tomorrow. Huesca also 22 points. Um, yeah, it's still interesting, but yeah. On the other side, I would say Levante is already safe with 30 somewhat ish. Real Valladolid 26, Celta 25 at the moment, Villarreal 23. All those have a game in hand. And then Rayo and Uesca, yeah, doesn't look all that pretty, but you never know. You never know. Uh, so that was Spain. Uh, let's before we go to the big, the other two. Let's quickly look France. I actually saw the highlights between Lyon and Strasbourg, uh, which was an interesting game because Lyon um, dominated, playing in the weird orange jerseys uh, uh, in Strasbourg. Musa Dembélé getting uh, one nil, gets a penalty for two nil. Then they take it a little bit easy, and within a minute, Strasbourg um, equalizes. Ajurk. Both go uh, Ajork, Ajork, both goals 69th and 70th minute, and that's how it stands. Lyon, of course, also Champions League. You know, uh, this weekend, except for the United Arsenal game, is so much um, 
overshadowed by the champ Champions League. There are not really any really big clashes this weekend, gotta say. Amiens, Nîmes 2 1, Dijon, uh, Reims 1 1, and Monaco, Bordeaux 1 1. So Monaco has got something. Uh, Probably and not PSG has been moved, so PSG will have another game down. Uh, I think the result in Strasbourg, uh, yeah, doesn't mean will put Lyon in a little bit into trouble as they are uh, falling behind Lille, uh, who still have to play. They will play Saint Etienne. That's gonna be an interesting one. Maybe not that bad that they got the point there, but uh, it looks more like drop points. Marseille is also. Uh, suddenly in contention so it remains to be seen uh we said it uh, earlier this week dijon carl gregor those are the ones that look to be relegated italy where we had yesterday the great result by juventus who basically rested everyone possible and i saw that when when, when i saw the first goal scorer keen who keen well He's a young player that actually played for Juventus already. He had he was out on loan, uh, never thought, and he made a great performance. He got the first goal in the 11th, the second goal in the 39th, and he actually also was fouled to have the penalty that Emre Can converted, and Matuidi made it then uh, 4-0. Lasagna only pulled Roto back in the 84th minute. Uh, if you look at the lineup that you uh, you was playing, they were really... You is all gung ho about this uh, game that will define their season against Atleti. If they don't win that game, they are not gonna. Uh, the season will be a failure because you get less titles this year than you have in the previous years. Uh, the cup is already gone. Uh, yes, you will win Serie A, but your goal, you brought in Ronaldo to win the Champions League. It's gonna be interesting, uh, but I, I honestly. The way you has been playing, I don't quite see it happening. But just look at the lineup. Chesney, Barzalia, Caceres, Rugani, Spinazzola, Emre Can, Bentancu, Alexandro, Keane, Berandeski, and Matuidi. I mean, that's a reserve squad. And still, uh, Udine has no chance. Parma wins against Genoa. I only saw maybe the first five minutes and then I went to Barcelona. Um, but yeah, uh, I think Kuchka, Kuchka got in 78th the win for Parma. And then I saw, of course, Kievo Milan, uh, where I was surprised that Kievo is playing in white. Uh, you know, I think it's the third jerseys. Um, why don't they play in yellow? Maybe they wanted to promote this kit. Not a great performance by Milan, I gotta say. Um, but they had control most of the time. Um, I actually fear that this will be one of those games that I saw early or early the season where they have control, 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 but don't get a goal. Well, uh, it's a slightly different Milan now, and uh, when Paqueta got fouled um, at the edge of the box, up steps uh, Bilia and slots it in in massive fashion. This was an absolutely picture perfect free kick. The one in Southampton was great. This one was better because it was right around the corner. There's absolutely no chance that anyone will um, convert that one. Uh, will uh, Any goalkeeper will save that one. And so I was happy for Bilia. Um, I'm not so much a fan of his because I think he's rather slow. But on the other side, when I, the way he played today, I got to give it to him, uh, gave Milan some security in midfield that has been missing sometimes this season. Uh and I thought, yeah, they will be cruising now, maybe 2-0, two, 3-0, two nil, nil, you know, boost a little bit your goal differential, especially ahead of the derby. It's good to go in uh, with a good feeling. Yeah, Yes, Milan was also resting players for some reason. Uh, I didn't feel that this was an absolute first-string lineup, but on the other side, you know, Castilleja was playing, um, was not too bad either. But then, I had to my... Of, out of almost nowhere. I mean, this was the first real chance that Kevo had, maybe a second one. Uh, a header that was actually, it felt like it's going in in slow motion. I thought that Donnarumma will for sure have it. I was stunned when this went in, just in the 41st first minute, so it ends 1 1. And right after the halftime, Kevo suddenly had a huge chance where Donnarumma needed need to make a save. And the conjointed effort actually got Milan. Um, 
out of this uh, pesky CAC situation. But just a few minutes later, uh, big, uh, nice attacking move, big chance for Piontek, who then, and that's the probably the big talking point in this game, um, on the rebound from from the goalkeeper, he attempts a bicycle kick where with a defender right there who actually touches the ball with the hand or the uh, the upper arm. So uh, too contentious scene. I think this was dangerous play by Piontek, uh, but also hand handball. And when it was reviewed, uh, the whole scene was reviewed, and no one found anything wrong with it. It was lucky that this was the. the the play was walls of whistle dead. But yeah, the ball goes to uh, Cialanoglu, who puts it uh, in, I think, and then Castillejo uh, plays it forward into the box where Piontek slots it home. Thank you, Piontek. 2-1 win for Milan, who had a few more chances to make it, uh, most notably Cassie after a wonderful attacking move, cannot put the ball on goal, and Romagnoli after a free from Cialanoglu, who came on the second half for uh, Paqueta, who had a little of, of, of an injury. Almost back heeled it into the net, uh, just went that much wide. That would have been a great goal, but yeah, three points, five wins in, in a row. Inter will for sure be behind Milan ahead of the derby, that's important. Um, and I actually do not dislike the fact that uh, Inter is now playing tomorrow uh, at home, albeit against Spal, but you never know with Inter. They have a very tough game against Frankfurt coming up, so. Fingers crossed here that the derby will uh, go well. I think the big game tomorrow is between Fiorentina and Lazio. Uh, that might be interesting. Some Sa Sa Sampdoria Atalanta could be interesting, although I don't quite see it. Uh, so yeah, Milan remains for sure in third spot. Now only five points behind Napoli, but Napoli will play at Sassuolo. I don't think that they will lose uh, points there. And yeah, you will far ahead. Uh, Kievo doesn't look, you know, still has only 10 points. Um, and you know, as I said, um, last time Bologna Frosinone, Kievo, those are the ones that uh, have to be in danger. We'll talk a little bit more about Serie A after too. Um, Moro. But now, let's go Germany. There was the most action. I mean, already yesterday's game was a really interesting one uh, between Bremen and Schalke. Uh, it, I don't want to say it was a do or die game for Schalke, but Schalke is in a really bad spot at the moment. And they played well at the beginning, and Mbolo got a goal when there should have been already two or three uh, before the 26th. And more or less out of, out of nowhere, uh, Rajitza equalizes for Bremen, and it's 1-1 uh, at halftime when Schalke clearly had the better of the game. And it doesn't get better because Kruse from a penalty, kind of a softish penalty, and Rajica again uh, turned the game around. I mean, 51st, the penalty, 73rd, 3-1 um, uh, for Bremen. Mbolo, five minutes before the end, pulls one back, but then Harnik made it in stoppage time, 4-2. Uh, the win for Bremen was sealed. And yeah, Schalke, I still don't think they will relegate it, but they don't look good. I don't know what's happening, and probably there will be a coaching change coming soonish, which, you know, you know how I think about it. But the big talking point is, of course, the championship race between Bayern and Dortmund. At the head of the, uh, the round, Dortmund had only a two-goal lead. Dortmund uh, was a miserable game because it was raining, raining, raining. Dortmund gets uh, very late. They take the lead. Uh, through, through a Royce penalty, but Stuttgart equalizes. And I can only imagine how uh, tempers are kind of nervous. But in the 84th, Paco Alcacer just slams it in into that. I mean, Dortmund is still playing their attack of football, but it's not as uh, undeniable as it was even two months ago. And Pulisic uh, makes it 3-1 and seals off the game. So 3-1 win for Dortmund, should be nice, we should remain ahead of the table. Nope. Bayern does what Bayern does. If Bayern gets rolling, and if they smell blood, blood and water, they are ruthless. 6-0 against Wolfsburg. 
2-0 up at halftime and running up the score, scoring at free wheel because they know after the 5-1 that we had at Gladbach, now uh, scoring as many goals as possible, we need every goal to get ahead of Dortmund. And now they are ahead uh, by two goals. Honestly, I don't see anything but Bayern winning this title. Uh, they were in trouble, but Dortmund was, is now in bigger trouble. And yes, the big showdown will come soon. I think early April between uh, Bayern and Dortmund, but it's in the Allianz Arena in Munich. Doesn't look good for Dortmund, I'm sorry to say. Um, I have my hopes, but it won't. Uh, Gnabry, Lewandowski, James Rodriguez, Müller, Kimmich and Lewandowski again. What can you say? Uh, other interesting results, nil-nil between Leipzig and Augsburg, that's bad news for Stuttgart. Uh, Freiburg wins through a, a late own goal, 2-1, uh, wonderful header by Ibisevic, who had just equalized five minutes earlier. Um, I'm always amazed at Freiburg. I told you Freiburg is one of the nicest towns in Germany. Uh, uh, but it's not a big town, but I'm always amazed that they have a full stadium there. And it looks like... I mean, I've, I've seen that stadium. Uh, this is an almost an old-fashioned stadium, and I love uh, that there's still some of those exist in Germany. Uh, great at atmosphere. It always seems packed, and it's a uh, good, atmos good, good atmosphere there. And Gladbach gets a somewhat lucky win at Mainz, only because it was a boring game, and a first shot on goal in the second half to make the 1-0. Uh, there was a huge triple chance in the second minute, and that was the only thing else uh, to talk, talk talk about. But Gladbach is back on winning terms. That means, we said already, Bayern now ahead of Dortmund, Leipzig 46 points. That seems like drop points for Gladbach, only 46 points. They are now level. Uh, Frankfurt can, with a win tomorrow at Düsseldorf, who actually is the second best team in the, uh, uh, in the return around now. Uh, but they can... Um, Gets close to Gladbach, but that's not an easy tie. Uh, Bremen and Hertha, Bremen is now ahead of Hertha. Wolfsburg in seventh spot got a 6 0 defeat at Bayern. Uh, unbelievable. Um, and as we say for relegation, yeah, Schalke 23 points, Augsburg 22 points, Stuttgart 19, Hannover for now 14, and Nuremberg 13. They are all still playing tomorrow. I think Stuttgart will play rele re re relegation, um, and Schalke and Augsburg will just escape. Well, that was my roundup for today. It's kind of really late, but you when you watch it, it's tomorrow morning already. Um, let me know which games you watched. As I said, I saw Southampton Tottenham. That was one that I was following. Then relatively closely in the second half, uh, Barcelona and Milan. Um, let me know your perspective on all, all these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon.